All right, welcome back. This is the last piece before everything comes together and we finish the conditions as well. However, this is the one that perhaps the most important because one way or another you will use these features, strategy control and functions in every strategy you make. The strategy control tab collects all the things that related to your positions and position management in any way so you can determine whether certain trades are opened, closed, how they are doing and accommodate your actions accordingly. First, both with market position and order position you can check active trigger trades. Market position, however, refers generally to all active positions while order position does that by magic numbers. If your condition is market position is flat but you have a long running trade on a daily time frame, for example, your expert won't open the new one even though it has nothing to do with the other. So I prefer order position and instead clarifying is long or is short, it's faster to use isn't flat for that does the same but uh, you can copy it around. Order's average price becomes useful when you use multiple positions giving the magic number as zero. However, unfortunately you can't separate long and short positions. But if you have only one active side or you are hedging some way, you can close your pack of positions at the absolute break-even through this rule. So for example, when a certain position is active or the price reached certain pips, you activate the rule that if the price falls back to the average price, you close the whole pack. The same can be achieved in other ways, we will see that shortly. By the way, the formula for average price looks like this. If you want, you can add only certain positions to it. The result can be saved into a variable by assigning it as you already know. Last order, and last order today, frankly, I don't use much for the same reason I avoid any general rule. But for example, you can exclude two positions of the same direction after another in counter trend strategies, like uh, selling at the high band of Bollinger. It can defend you against strong trends. Now, bar since order opened or closed are an interesting thing, for it can give you a time limit between two positions. For example, many cases it can be disadvantageous if a new order is placed just at the place of the old one closed. Think of your script for example. Let's say you edit some advanced trial to do partial close, send email, fancy mix and fourth, run it as an expert. You close it manually but forgot to disable the expert and bam, it puts a new order right back. To avoid this, you can have a protocol that forbids it for a couple of bars after close. Orders open, close this bar or minute serve similar cases. You can activate rules once such things happened. For example, after some orders are closed, you can clear all unused pendings or avoid unnecessary triggers by setting quantities to zero. Pending order exists is the pending variation of order position. As I mentioned, it's important not to leave pendings behind, always clear them when they are not needed. Orders open today can limit your daily transactions, but mind that other orders also count. Open position in money or in pips is a very important one. The pips part you can use to set layers for multiple positions or invisible stops or take profits by pips. Of course the pip version is uh, size independent while you can refer to the floating profit or loss by the money version. Both versions you can refer to a specific order or all by zero but you can also add them to one another from functions. For example, if you want to exit when your loss reached your risk limit, you can use this formula. Negative money or pips will be loss, positive will be gain and the direction depends on whether it's long or short. Now, there are two seemingly identical options that summarize your results, some of closed and total. The two, however, are different. Sum of closed will give you the result in money or in pips, while total profits and losses counts the winner and loser trades by number. You can use both to give a limit or send a mail after, let's say, 10 losses in a row. 
current position size you can use to measure where you stand when using multiple positions or hedging, but there are other better ways for that. Also, if you want to run a lot of experts, you can send yourself a note if there are too many active positions to avoid undesirable exposure on one side. Account balance and equity are pretty clear. You can use them for a lot of things from position size increases to risk management. Your balance will change after closed positions while the equity all the time. You can store the highest equities of positions for averaging it and get a better exit point or the relation of the two get important in grid strategies where you always need to mind your floating profit and loss versus the profit you have already stored. Well, the following three, the open price, the stop loss or the take profit of a given order are also widely used, especially with actions like moving a stop loss. You can connect one order to another by it, unite stops and so on. Symbols I rarely use, but these are for creating correlation strategies, for example, if uh, in the euro dollar this and that happens and these positions are active, then do that on uh, dollar, franc or whatever. I'm not a big fan of such strategies for correlations are relative and periodic and it's also hard to control risk. But I know a guy who has some uh, carry trade positions by correlating pairs that are neutral by swaps. <laughs> it's an interesting idea, but uh, I have never heard of him ever since. Well, this was the strategy control tab. Let's continue with the functions, where some features we have already dealt with. Now, there are two parts in it, an algebraic and one that is connected to other tabs. The algebraic you will use to add mathematical formulas from the basic ones to absolute values and minimums. This, however, takes practice due to the unique structure of the program. There are no problems when there are two elements only, but if you want to add more, you have to add them the same way into one of the dialogue of the operation. These will be separated by brackets. While this causes no harm as long as you do associative operations like addition, as you know very well, parenthesis matters a lot in other cases. While writing a formula on a paper or into a calculator happens in a linear way, here formulas are built inside out. In this case, if you want to write more complex ones, in order to get the right parenthesis, you have to find the defining middle of it and starting there always divide the two parts into smaller and smaller pieces. As a result, modifying it will be easy if you want to add something to the middle, while unlike on a paper where you just write it afterwards, if you for example need to divide the whole formula afterwards or get the absolute value of it, you will have to start all over again with that operation. To save time in these cases, if you have left out something, you can add the result as it is as a variable and do the operation on it separately. With some practice, you will get the feel of it though, but it's better to write down the formula first to see it. Maximum and minimum can give the bigger or smaller value of 2, so for example, you can have a formula for a take profit, but give it a limit how big or small it can be. There's a great video on the site about a triple exponential moving average strategy that includes such a trick. There's an inside condition in functions that you can use to avoid zero divisions in formulas, much alike as in uh, Microsoft Excel. Convert options are to get certain results into the same dimension, while a 10 pip stop might be easy to interpret for you, for the expert it needs to be converted into the right format. Convert to pips do this, while into real pips the opposite. It's not easy at first when to use it, so here are a few tips. If something referred in the options or dialogues as stop loss or in pips, then the conversion is built inside. Profit in pips don't need to be converted, for it does that by itself. Everything up in the action panel needs to be a distance as a number, everything down needs to be as a price and converted accordingly if the format is not correct. Just as well, if you use it in if, you need to mind where it goes. 
convert profit and loss field does the same as convert real pips, just with profit and loss results. And lastly, isbar open filters all conditions in the rule to be measured only at the opening of the new bar, so actions will only take place then. Within the other tab, beside adding any number or in rare occasions a string, you can add built-in candle patterns, which is a cool thing. They were great along with uh, counter trend strategies such as uh, RSI overbought, so I encourage you to experiment with them. At the end of the list, you can refer to variables as you already know. So, with this lecture, we have concluded the effective part of the tutorial course, with only an additional section to be left, the roadblocks. There we are going through some of the most common errors you can encounter and see what might causes them. In the meantime, start trying all out we discussed and experiment around for combining the different features is really the way to learn the program. And working with Ear Wizard will also help you to develop a certain way of thinking. To be able to break processes into basic elements, which is what all programmers do and it comes really handy in many aspects of life.